50. Drills it high end over end. It's going to come down to Travis Shelton at the 5, across the 10, the 15, the 20, and he falls forward out to the 25-yard line. So that's where the Temple Owls will start. First down and 10 to go. And it was Mike, or Chris Hall who came down the field to make the tackle that time for the Bobcats. Chris Hall downfield to make the special teams tackle. So the Owls will start first and 10 from their 25-yard line. And we'll get our first look at Bond Charlton at quarterback. Temple will show you a lot of different things. They go with wide outs both ways. They stack the backfield in the eye. First play of the game. Bond Charlton looks over that Bobcat defense. And here is an end around handoff and spinning away is the wide out across the 30, 35. And he's going to be out just a little bit shy of the first down. A little razzle dazzle. Travis Shelton came around on the reverse. They handed him the ball. There was a Bobcat right there who didn't make the tackle, was just off a little bit, and that gave him some extra yards. Yeah, that was Jamison Harkey. He read the play perfectly. He was in position to make the play, and the running back is just being the great athlete that the, these athletes are, was able to spin off of Jamison, pick up positive yards. The tackle was made by Todd Koenig, so here we go with a second down situation and one to go. Charlton fakes, he rolls to the right side, looks, now keeps it across the 35, the 40, and falls forward out to the 41-yard line, and that's a first down for the Owls. Strong side linebacker Michael Brown over there to make the tackle for the Bobcats. I think if the Bobcats can force Von Charlton to run more often tonight, they're going to come up with a lot of big stops because Von Charlton's not a very fast guy. He's not a mobile quarterback. He likes to stand in the pocket and deliver the football. First down, 10 to go. Here's a handoff that goes over the left side to Jason Harper, crosses the 45, and Harper takes it out to the 47-yard line. That's a gain of six. That'll make it second down and four yards to go. Middle linebacker Taj Henley came in to make the tackle that time for the Bobcat defense. Watch the Temple on the film. They come out with multiple formations. There are multiple offense, but you're going to see a lot of different formations. And head coach Frank Solich made a joke earlier this week and talked about they may be making up their own formations. They had a week off in preparation. It's just the offensive coordinator for Temple was at Syracuse when Donovan McNabb was at Syracuse. So the Owls now face uh, second down and four to go. Wide outs both ways. Backfield of the off eye set to the right side. Here is a give. Over the right side, it goes to Jason Harper again. Harper crosses midfield and is spun down at the 46-yard line of the Bobcats, but that's a first down for the Owls. Strong safety, Michael Mitchell up to make the tackle for the Cats. Michael Mitchell. Michael Mitchell, we've caught his name quite a bit this year. He's out there with a wrap on his, on his hand. He continues to play uh, with an injury and just a tough football player. Loves to fill the lanes as, from the safety position and make big hits. So it is first down and 10 to go for the Owls at the Bobcat 46-yard line. Twin receivers to the left. The backfield in the off eye set to the right. Vaughn Charlton drops straight back in the pocket. Has time. Passes. A pass complete on the left flat. And the game is down to the 34-yard line of the Cats, and catching it was Bruce Francis, their outstanding junior wide receiver, but that is another first down for Temple. Yeah, Bruce Fran Francis, six foot, 181 pound junior, uh, playing wide receiver number 82. He had a 61 yard touchdown catch against Miami two weeks ago. Uh, he's a very dangerous receiver, over 500 yards receiving this year and five touchdowns. So it is first down and 10 to go for Temple. They're moving the football against this Bobcat defense. Francis in motion to the right, goes back to the left side, and the handoff up the middle, it goes to Jason Harper, who fights his way down to the 29-yard line. That's a gain of five. That'll make it second down and five to go. Defensive end, Connor Riley, up to make the tackle for the Bobcat defense. Right now, Ohio's losing that battle up front. We talked about that in pregame, how Ohio must establish the line of, line of scrimmage and dominate the line of scrimmage. Right now, they're losing that battle. I think the defense is trying to fill out this offense, figure out what's going on. But really, Temple's just coming out in basic formations and running basic zone plays and pass plays. 
High formation, wide outs both ways, two tight ends in the game on second down and five to go for the Owls. Charlton turns, hands the ball off to Jason Harper, tries to turn the corner, and he's in trouble, and he's hit for a loss. Back at the 34, 35 yard line, Lee Renfro knifed in there, pursued him, and would not let him turn the corner. And that's what you teach your linebacker when the, the offensive lineman is trying to get up out on you, you get, you get into him, you rip through him, you stay on the outside, try to turn the play back inside, the running back try to bounce it out, and Lee Renfro is right there to make the tackle. Good football play. Lost back to the 34, the catch. It's going to make it now third down and 10 to go for Temple. They'll spread everybody out. They'll go with two wide outs to the right, a wide out to the left. They go to the shotgun formation. Third down, they need 10. Snap back to Vaughn Charlton. Pretty good protection. Passes out on the right flat and a catch inside the 30 and down to the 29-yard line goes Bruce Francis. He's going to be lacking yardage for the first down. It's going to bring up fourth down and about five yards to go. Middle linebacker Taj Henley, strong safety Michael Mitchell combined on the stop. And coming into the game is Jake Brownell, their field goal kicker. The ball will be set down at the 36. That'll make it a 46-yard field goal attempt from the near hash mark. He'll be kicking with just a little bit of an angle. One for three from this range on the season. The snap, the ball is down, the kick is up, and it's not even going to make it. It is short. So the Bobcats stop Temple on their opening drive, and they will take over. First down and 10 to go, and a good stop by the defense. Yeah, the defense did an excellent job. Temple came out on that third down play with three wide receivers when he crossed him. Now, so they've run deep enough for us to get the first down. But Vaughn was trying to get the ball to one of his playmakers, just tried to make a play in Ohio, kept everything in front of him, made the tackle, forced the field goal, and forced the kicker to kick a Bad kick now, Ohio's offense is coming out on the field. So Theo Scott sets the Bobcats down, first down and 10 to go, and they start from their 29 yard line. Wideouts both ways, single setback, rolling to the left is Theo, dumps a pass out of the left flat. The catch by Andrew Mooney, 35 40, across the 40, and he's out of bounds at the 43 yard line. A 14 yard gain, first down, Ohio. Outside linebacker Alex Joseph came over to make the tackle for Temple. Good to see you, Dean Mooney, back out there and playing tonight for, for the Bobcats in the tight, tight end position. With both of these tight ends, David Carter and Andrew Mooney, is having big seasons for Ohio. They continue to be a key, the central part of this offense. So it is first down and 10 to go for the Cats. They are at their 43-yard line. They go to the shotgun formation. Here's a handoff to Chris Garrett coming around in motion, and he's across the 45, and Garrett takes it out to the 46-yard line for a gain of three. That'll make it second down and seven yards to go. In on the stop, cornerback Jamal Shoulders with defensive end Morris Bluford for the Temple defense. 9.55 remaining in this opening quarter. No score. Ohio's first possession of the night. Out come the Bobcats. Taylor Price wide to the right along with Cheeto Wakocha. A wide out to the left and they go to the shotgun formation. Theo Scott, the quarterback. Here's a snap back to him. Two-step drop over the middle. And a pass to LeVon Brazil over the middle. He's into Temple territory and down he goes at the 45-yard line of the Owls. That is a gain of nine, and that is a first down and ten to go for the Bobcats. Theo Scott standing in the block with a lot of poise and delivering the football, and LeVon Brazil came across uh, the middle wide open, was able to secure the football and get upfield for the first down. High 23, the clock running left to play in this opening quarter. The Cats are on the prowl. Taylor Price goes wide to the right, set to the left is Cheeto Wakocha, and the backfield is stacked in the eye. Theo Scott looks over that Temple defense. Turns, hands the ball up to Calvin McCray, tries the middle, and Calvin gets it inside the 45 down to the 44 yard line of the Owls. Got one tough yard on the play. The whole interior of that Temple defensive line met him and stopped him. The entire defense was in on that play. All 11 hats for Temple was in on that play. So you can see what Temple's going to try to do to stop Calvin McCray. Calvin's had a monster season, and again, you know, Ohio, I figured Ohio had to get him the football, and they must get him the football. But again, it's, it's going to be tough when you have a whole defense of eyeing down number five. So we have now second down and nine to go. Chris Garrett goes in motion to the right side. They operate out of the gun. Snap back to Theo. 
Here is a fake, pitches the ball off to Chris Garrett inside the 40, and he just tripped up as he gets down to the 34-yard line of Temple. Morris Bluford got a hand out and tripped him up, or that could have been a touchdown. Yeah, I love the play call, the shotgun, and they brought Chris Garrett in motion, ran a little option play with him, taking the Calvin and play, and, and that's what's going to open up the running game for Calvin is these type of plays, and when you have a quarterback like Theo Scott that can run the football, run the option, it's going to open things up for Calvin. That was a gain of 10, and give the Bobcats a first down and 10 to go at the 34-yard line of the Temple Owls. Well, Kocha goes wide to the right, set to the left side is Taylor Price. Two tight ends in the game. Single setback is Calvin McCray. Now tight end Andrew Mooney goes in motion to the right. Theo Scott takes a snap, fakes, bootlegs it around to the left side. Arches a pass deep down the field into the end zone. Oh, he had Taylor Price wide open and overshot him in the left corner of the end zone incomplete. Boy, Theo must have been hitting, hitting the weights pretty hard this week. He delivered that football. Came out on a rollout pass, and he had Taylor Price wide open down the left sideline. He threw that about five yards outside the back of the end zone. I, like, I, bet you, I bet you he would like to have that, that yeah. one back because Taylor was definitely wide open down the left side. The ball comes back to the Temple 34 where it is second down and 10 to go for Ohio. 7.53 left to go in the first quarter where no score, the Bobcats and the Owls. Chris Garrett goes wide to the right. Taylor Price is set to the left. Single setback, Calvin McCray, two tight ends in the game. Theo's got a long checkoff. Looks like he's changing the play at the line of scrimmage. Here is a fake and an end around handoff. It goes to Chris Garrett again. He spins away from one owl and takes it down to the 32 yard line. Got a couple on it, but that was about it. Temple had uh, smelled that play out right from the get go. Quarterback Anthony Furla stayed at home and stopped the play. So that's going to bring up now third down and eight to go for Ohio. So a big third down situation here for the Bobcat offense. Levon Brazil goes wide to the right along with Cheeto Wakocha. Taylor Price is set to the left. They go to the shotgun. Calvin McCray is aligned to the left side of quarterback Theo Scott in the gun. The snap back to Theo. One step drop. Looking. Now runs out of the pocket. Now dumps a pass up the field. A catch is made by Levon Brazil. Let's see where they're going to mark his forward progress. And I think it's going to be down to the 30 yard line for a gain of two. Cornerback Anthony Furla again made the play for the Temple defense. This is going to bring up fourth down, and we'll see Michael Bronstein check into the game. I do like the play selection by offensive corner Tim Alvin. He's just mixing things up. He's shown Temple we have other weapons on this football team other than Calvin, and what that's going to do is going to allow the running game to open up for Calvin McCray if they continue to be successful the way they have in this drive. This is going to be a 47-yard field goal attempt by Michael Bronstein. The ball placed right in the middle of the field. Snap, the ball is down, here's the kick, it's got the distance, and it is, it is good! So Michael Bronstein picks up 37 yard field goal. We have 631 remaining in the first quarter. The Bobcats three, Temple nothing. Back after this on the Citizens Bank, Ohio Bobcat Sports Network. And again, he'll kick to either Travis Shelton or Jamal Shoulders. And here is the kick by Bronstein. High end over end. This is going to go to Shoulders at the 10. Up the field to the 15, across the 20. Here's outside wide, is in trouble, eludes one defender, and then is brought down as he gets out to the 25 yard line. So that's where Temple will start. First down and 10 to go. 6.22 left to play in this opening quarter at Peyton Stadium. And it's the Bobcats three and the Temple Owls nothing. So quarterback Vaughn Charlton and the Temple offense will check back into the game. Vaughn Charlton was 9 of 13 for 109 yards and a touchdown two weeks ago against Miami of Ohio. Delano Green is flanked wide to the left for Temple. Another wide out to the right. The backfield shows the I formation. Bruce Francis split to the right. Now lines up on the wing to the right. And here is a handoff straight up the middle. And nothing doing. Oh, the Bobcats stopped the ball carrier big time. Defensive end Jamison Hartke was there to lead the charge on the play. And Landon Cohn was right in the middle of that tackle as well. No gain on the play, make it second down and 10 to go. Temple at their 25-yard line. A long huddle by the Owls, and out they come. This time they go to the shotgun with receivers both ways, and Daryl Robinson to the right side of quarterback Vaughn Charlton. Here's a snap back to Charlton, inside handoff. 
to Daryl Robinson, crosses the 25, gets it out to about the 28-yard line, picks up three yards on the carry. Defense again, Jamison Hartke over there to make the stop for the Bobcat defense. I like the way Jamison Hartke's playing tonight. He's playing fast. He's reading the plays perfectly, and the, the right tackle is trying to seal off uh, you know, Jamison Hartke on that play, and Jamison just read it perfectly. Beat him to the punch, was able to make the tackle. Third down and seven to go for the Owls from their 28-yard line. Out comes Temple. They go with twin receivers to the right, a wide out to the left, and they go to the shotgun formation. Let's see what head coach Al Golden has in store for the Bobcats on third and seven. Bobcats are coming with the blitz, and here is Trevin being chased for running for his life. He's across the 35 and is forced out of bounds. Let's see where he stepped out. They're going to bring the ball back and set it down at the 33-yard line. That's going to be about two yards shy of the first down yardage needed for the Owls. Ohio brought Fourth pressure on that play. They brought strong safety Michael Mitchell. They brought the linebackers in on that play. And you can see Von Charlton, as soon as he saw that pressure, he immediately stopped looking downfield and he panicked. And he, luckily, he was able to get outside. And uh, Ohio was able to chase him down and push him out of bounds right before uh, he was able to get the first down. Jeff Watney, who averages 40.8 per kick, back in punt formation for the Owls. So again, a good stop by that Bobcat defense. Vince Davidson back in single safety for the Bobcats. Low snap. It's picked up by the punter. He gets the kick away. It's going to hit at the 32-yard line and will be down at the 29-yard line. Or check it. Mark Parson was the guy who was back to field that punt for the Bobcats. So a 38-yard punt on the play. And Ohio will take over. First down and 10 to go at their 29-yard line. We have 4.45 remaining in the opening quarter. Three to nothing, Bobcats. Special team unit really missed an opportunity to get a block there. That, that football, the snapper, bounced it too hard and back to the corner, and they just really just, just missed getting blocked on. Wide outs both ways. Here's a pitch to Calvin McRae on a sweep to the right side. Follows fullback. Mitch Marcillo across the 30, and Calvin gets it out to about the 35-yard line. A nice run. That's a gain of six. That'll make it a second down and four to go. Defensive end Brian Sanford is over there to make the tackle for the Temple defense. Ohio really likes that play. It's a short toss to Calvin McRae, and he has the option to either cut it back or stay with his blocks and, and cut up field. And, and Calvin runs that play very well, the short toss in, into uh, to the right side of the field and following his blockers and is able to get positive yards. So it is second down and four to go. Three wide outs, two set to the left side for the Cats. McCray, the lone set back in the backfield. Theo Scott is changing the play at the line of scrimmage. He's got to hurry to get the play off. He does. Drops back, passes out on the right flat. Diving catch made by Taylor Price out to the 41-yard line. That is a gain of six, and that's going to be a first down for the Bobcats. Tell Theo Scott spent some time this week in the, in the film room and learning a little bit about what this defense is trying to do to him, and they walked up in the holes, was going to try to uh, bring a little bit of pressure. Theo was able to change the play at the line of scrimmage. The, the corners were playing off, about 10 yards off his receivers, and it's just an easy pitch and catch. First down and 10 for Ohio from their 41-yard line. Taylor Price and Cheetah Wakocha both go wide to the left side. Backfield is stacked in the eye. Here is a handoff. It goes to Calvin McRae picking his way over the right side. Calvin gets it out to the 44-yard line. That's a gain of three on the play. That'll make it second down and seven to go for the Bobcats. 322 left to go in this opening quarter at Peden Stadium. Ohio three and Temple nothing. We're just playing their base 4-3 defense right now, and, and it looks like they have a spy on number five on Calvin McRae because everywhere Calvin goes, that, that uh, defender seems to follow him. And Again, if Ohio continues to be effective in this passing game, it's going to open things up. Chris Garrett goes in motion to the right from the shotgun formation. Theo Scott hands it off inside to Calvin McRae, and he carries out to the 49-yard line. 
That is a gain of five. It's going to bring up third down and we'll call it two yards to go. Outside linebacker Amara Kamara over there to make the tackle for Temple. This is going to be a key area for the Ohio Bobcats tonight. You know, this defense has only given up 32% on third down. The Miami of Ohio was three of 19 a couple of weeks ago against Temple. So third downs are key for Ohio tonight. Third down and a couple for the Cats. They go with twin receivers to the left. The backfield is in the eye with Marcillo and Calvin McCray. Theo Scott under center, hands it off to Calvin, up the middle he goes, carries Owls with him and gets down to about the 47-yard line and he has the first down yardage. Defensive tackle Elisha Joseph was over there to make the first hit for the Temple defense, but not before a first down for the Cats. It wasn't anything fancy about that. Ohio just lined up, played smash mouth football, gave Calvin the football off the, the left side for a first down. 2.09, the clock winding down, left in this first quarter. Ohio three and Temple nothing. Taylor Price goes wide to the right, set to the left side is Cheeto Wakocha. This time they go to the shotgun. Snap back to Theo Scott, fakes a handoff, passes out on the right side, and a catch by the tight end and through Mooney. He's inside the 35, and he's down to the 31-yard line of Temple. Gain of 16 on the pass play, free safety. Jaquan Jarrett Jay went over to make the tackle for Temple. Andrew Moody just found the soft spot in the zone off the seam, and Theo Scott saw him wide open, delivered the football, perfect uh, pass and catch for Ohio, first down. Theo Scott's five for six for 48 yards right now. So the Cats move to the line of scrimmage. Taylor Price goes wide to the right. Cheetah Wakocha is set to the left. Backfield shows the eye. Theo Scott back in the pocket, runs, and tries to get away. Penalty flags fall. He fires a pass down the field, and it is incomplete. He got it to Cheeto Wakocha, but unfortunately, Cheeto was out of bounds. Cornerback Anthony Ferda and free safety Jaquan Jarrett were there for Temple. But when you see those flags, you think maybe there might have been a hold. We'll find out here in just a moment from referee Stan Evans. So a holding call is the call against the Bobcats. That was a you know a penalty against Ohio, but again, that's what Theo Scott brings to the table. There was pressure, the, the pocket was caving in on him, and he was able to get away from the pressure and escape up the field. And he had a lot of room to run, but he was still looking downfield to deliver the football. And just unfortunately, Ohio got caught holding. First down and 20, football back at the Temple 41-yard line from the shotgun. Back goes Theo Scott, a pass over the middle, and a catch by LeVon Brazil. Eludes one tackle, 35, 30 near side, 25, still on his feet, and he finally is forced out after a big game down to the 12, or check it, the 17-yard line of Temple. Strong safety, Dominic Harris got him out of bounds, but a pass play good for 24 yards and a big first down for the Cats. LeVon Brazil was lined up on the right side, just ran it underneath the route, came across the middle. Theo Scott delivered the football, and that was just all LeVon Brazil right there on that run. And again, Calvin McCray was coming up in your picture, getting a block downfield to allow Brazil to able get down the sideline. Big play for Ohio. First down and 10 to go for the Bobcats. Taylor Price wide to the right. Chris Garrett is split to the left side. They go to the shotgun. They send Garrett in motion to the right. They hand the ball up to him. Now he pitches it back to Taylor Price coming the other way. Taylor to the 20 and finally upended off his feet and down he goes at the 19 yard line. So they lost a couple on that play. Defensive end Junior Gallette was there to mess up that play for the Owl defense. Boy, Junior Gallette made a huge play. Taylor Price, uh, he's got to do a little better job in that. He's got to give it around Gillette. That was a touchdown all the way, but you know, got to give the guy credit. Uh, Gillette was on the ground. He got cut down. He was able to get back up and trip up Taylor Price and keep him from getting a touchdown. So a loss of two makes it second down and 12 to go for the Cats. 38 seconds left to go in the first quarter. Out they come. Price goes wide to the right. Along with Chris Garrett, Cheeto Wakocha is split to the left side. They send Garrett in motion to the left. From the shotgun, the snap back to Theo Scott. They hand the ball off to Chris Garrett, spins his way inside, takes it down to about the 18-yard line. Got a yard of the play. 
It was defensive tackle Elisha Joseph and outside linebacker Alex Joseph who combined to make the stop for Temple. That was a gain of one. It's going to bring up third down and 11, and time is going to expire in this first quarter. That's the end of the first quarter here at Keaton Stadium with the score, Ohio 3, Temple nothing. Ready to get things going as Theo Scott has him in the shotgun formation. Snap back to Theo. Pretty good protection. Passes left side, and it is incomplete at the 10 yard line. Levon Brazil couldn't hang on. That's going to bring up a fourth down, and we will see Michael Bronstein again. Evan Cooper was back there covering a cornerback for Temple as Levon. Brazil and Theo Scott continue to work with each other and get better. You now Brazil's got to run that route a little bit deeper, take that corner off a little bit farther, and then come back at the first down mark where we try to make that catch. It's just a little miscommunication. Brazil didn't get deep enough. This will be a 35-yard field goal attempt by Michael Bronstein. The snap, the ball is down, the kick is on the way. It's long enough, and it is no good. It is off to the left. So Temple dodges a bullet there, and the Owls will take over the football, still down by only three. And right now, we've got a timeout on the field. Hind quarterback, Vaughn Charlton. Bruce Francis starts in motion to the right. Here is the handoff, inside handoff to Jason Harper, crosses the 20, and Harper takes it out to the 24-yard line for a pickup of four. Strong side linebacker Michael Brown over there to make the tackle that time for the Bobcat defense. Jason Harper, the tailback, 5'9", 195, another one of those sophomores on this football team. He's leading the team in rushing 410 yards and four touchdowns in the season. Second down, six yards to go for the Owls, and out they come. Francis wide to the right, along with Dion Crudup. Backfield of the off-eye, set to the left side. Second down and six for the Owls. Back in the pocket goes Charlton. Passes out at the 30. A catch is made at the 30. 31, 32, out to the 33-yard line. And that is a first down. And the pass is complete to Bruce Francis. That was good for eight and a first down. The offensive line for Temple did an excellent job in that pass protection. There was no movement up front from the defensive front of, uh, of Ohio. They really stoned them at, at, the, at the point of attack. And Vaughn Charlton was able to deliver the football and stand in the pocket. So first down and 10 to go for the Owls. They are at their 33-yard line. They go with triple receivers, three wide outs to the left. Nobody split right. Single setback. Charlton fakes one pass. Now lobs it down the field and had a man wide open. That was Dion Crudup and overshot him incomplete. He was covered on the play by strong safety Michael Mitchell. Michael Mitchell's there on the play, and Todd Kagan was also in on that play. And it was just a bump fake. It, was, it looked like an out and go, I thought, at first. But, uh, you know, uh, Vaughn was, was looking at Bruce Francis downfield on that, on that uh, pitch and go. And then he came back to the guy running down the seam, just overthrew him a little bit. Second down and 10 yards to go for the Owls. Football back at their 33-yard line. Wide outs both ways. Single setback. Bruce Francis goes in motion. Now comes back. Here's Charlton handing the ball off to the running back, and he has popped at the 35-yard line, a gain of two, and then he was really pushed back by Brett Sykes and by Lee Renfro, who combined on a major league hit on the ball carrier. Lee Renfro, the number 32, has come up big for Ohio. It seems like the last couple of weeks he came up with a couple of big plays in this Bowling Green, and then tonight he's made a couple of key tackles and just really filling the holes the way a linebacker should and delivering the ball first. So it brings up third down and eight to go now for Temple. The football at their 35-yard line. 13-10 to go in the first half. 3 to nothing Ohio with the lead over the Owls. Temple goes with three wide outs to the right. They go to the shotgun. Von Charlton takes a snap. Back in the pocket he goes. Passes over the middle and a catch is made. And again is out to the 44-yard line. And they should have the first down as hauling that one in. Let's double check and see who it was. It was uh, Delano Green who brought that one in, and that is enough for a first down for the Owls. Stop me by middle linebacker Taj Henley. Yeah, Michael Brown had his hands on him first. Six foot three, 230 pound linebacker made the initial hit. I thought he was going to be stopped short, but the receiver was able to bounce off that tackle and get the first down. So here come the Owls. They go to the shotgun, and Von Charlton, the quarterback, is split out wide to the left side. Here is a snap. 
and it goes to Dion Kubik trying to sweep the right side and he doesn't get anything. No gain on the play. The Ohio defense was not fooled. Jacob Williamson, a nose guard, and Michael Mitchell, the strong safety, stayed at home. They had split the quarterback to the left, and they snapped it to a wide receiver, Dion Crudup. And Brett Sykes was able to get penetration and cause that play to bounce outside where Ohio's pursuit defense could get there and corner the running back in and, and hit him for a loss. So it's no gain. It'll be second down and 10 to go for the Owls from their 45-yard line. Twin receivers to the left. The backfield is in the off-eye with the fullback set a bit to the right side. Here's Charlton this time faking a handoff. Back he goes, passes, and a look in to Bruce Francis, and he's complete down to the 39-yard line of the Cats, and Bruce Francis did a juggling act as he caught the ball. Middle linebacker Taj Henley, cornerback Julian Posey finally made the stop, but not before a 13-yard passing game. Well, Julian Posey was just playing in a, in, in a zone coverage and allowed a little too much room for Bruce Francis. Bruce Francis is the best receiver on this football team for Temple when he was able to run a, a deep end on uh, Julian Posey and catch the football for first down. Two wideouts to the left, a wideout to the right. First and 10 for the Owls. Here is a pitch, and it comes to Jason Harper to the near side, 35. Harper to the 30, and he is down. We have a late arriving penalty flag at about the, let's see, he spotted around the 30 yard line of the Bobcats. Weak side linebacker Lee Renfro over there to force him out of bounds, and that was a gain of nine yards on the play, but let's see what this penalty is all about. And a hold is the call against, that's the initial call against Temple. So that hurts the Owls big time. From the spot of the foul, replay first down. And that is referee uh, Stan Evans. I was just getting ready to say that uh, Josh Bundy, number 39, got called on that penalty. He's a 5'10", 228-pound fullback. He's the only senior uh, on this football team on the travel roster. Football is back to the 42-yard line of the Owls. It is first down and 13 yards to go. Backfield of the off-eye, set right, a wide out to the right. That is Crudup. He starts back in motion the other way. And here is a pass out of the right flat, incomplete. They tried to get it to Jason Harper coming out of the backfield, but no go. Uh, the pass was overthrown. Strong side linebacker Michael Brown was over there covering for the Bobcat defense. Unfortunately, the tailback Jason Harper did not catch it. Football at Temple was able to get themselves in a one-on-one -on -one situation with the Ohio linebacker. And most of the time, a tailback is going to win that matchup on a one-on-one -on -one situation. But Jason Harper, watching him on film, he had a couple of fumbles a couple two weeks ago against Miami, so they have kind of been demoted. Uh, and Daryl Robinson is now the starting tailback for Temple, but uh, Jason Harper's having trouble hanging on the football, and he's having trouble catching the football. Second down and 13 to go for the Owls, still at the 42-yard line of the Bobcats. Two wideouts each way. They go to the shotgun. Here's Crudup again, taking the snap from center, 45-40, and dives his way down to the 37, 36-yard line of Ohio. It was Lee Renfro and Michael Mitchell combining on the stop for the Bobcats. So again, they snap the ball to Dion Crudup, who is one of the backs back of the shotgun. Football is going to be placed down at the 37-yard line. That was a gain of five, so that'll make it third down and eight yards to go for Temple. Big play here for this Bobcat defense. They go to the shotgun. Kudup goes wide to the right. Set to the left side is Bruce Francis. Kudup now comes in motion. A snap back to the quarterback. Charlton passes a little looking over the middle, and it's caught by Francis. He's wrestled down at the 32-yard line. That's a gain of only five. Quarterback Julian Posey did the wrestling. It's going to bring up now a fourth down situation and a long three. I was doing an excellent job on that third down play. He definitely loves the run on the third down. The crossing routes with two wide receivers on the right side and the left side crossing and try to get the Ohio defenders uh, uh, twisted up. But Ohio again keeps everything in front of him and makes a stop. Now they're going for it on fourth down. Under center this time is the quarterback, Von Charlton. Wideouts both ways. 
Let's see what they elect to do. A fake handoff, and Carlson passes complete to the tight end, Keith Armstrong, down at the 34-yard line. It's not enough for the first down, and oh, did Charlton get hit with a big one. That was Mike Mitchell that came in on that, on that play and laid the big hit. So we've got a timeout on the field. We have ways. The backfield is in the I formation with Morcillo and Calvin McRae. Here's a handoff to Calvin, or, or check it. It is, yes, it is Calvin out to the 39-yard line, and that is a gain of five. That'll make it second down and five to go. Outside linebacker Alex Joseph came over to make the tackle for the Temple defense. Well, I has done a really good job in the I formation, especially with those fullbacks, Mitch Morcillo and Jason White, leading the way for Calvin McRae on those off-tackle plays, and Calvin was able to get pick up positive yards, another five-yard gain for Calvin. Second down and five to go for the Bobcats, and out they come. LeVon Brazil wide to the right, along with Justin Fitzgerald. McCray, the lone setback behind quarterback Theo Scott. Temple is readjusting his defense at the line of scrimmage. Here is a pitch to Calvin, looking for running room, and he's cut down at the 40. Gain of only one on the play. It's going to bring up third down and seven to go. Or check it, it's going to be third and about four as defensive tackle Terrence Knighton was in there on the hit along with middle linebacker Tommy Weatherspoon. So third down and four yards to go for the Cats. They are at their 40 yard line. Eight and a half minutes remaining in this first half and it's three to nothing in favor of Ohio over Temple. Fitzgerald wide to the left along with Brazil. Backfield is stacked in the eye with Morcillo and McCray. Theo Scott this time, fakes a handoff, goes back in the pocket, dumps a pass over the right flat, and a catch is made by LeVon Brazil, and he's all the way down to the Temple, 37-yard line, a big, big pass play, Scott to Brazil. Brazil coming across the field again on a drag route, and Theo Scott standing in the pocket, but again, what made that play go was Calvin McRae coming up and filling up on that line, fitting that linebacker up that came on the blitz. It was trying to get in the face of Theo Scott. Calvin made a big block to allow Theo to stand in the pocket, deliver the football for a first down to LeVon Brazil. 23-yard pass play, and that gives the Cats a first down. Twin receivers to the left. Single setback, Calvin McRae all alone in the backfield. Theo Scott under center. Hands the ball off to Calvin, and he falls forward down to the 36-yard line for a gain of one. Middle linebacker Tommy Weatherspoon was there to stop him. Second down and nine to go for Ohio with 7.55 and the clock running left in this first half, and it's three to nothing in favor of Ohio over the Temple Owls. Temple head coach uh, Al Golden really made a statement earlier this week about how mean and tenacious the Ohio offensive line is and how 42 carries is just, you know, common for this football team. So you can tell he's really focused on stopping this running game and trying to stop number five. From the shotgun, it is second down and nine. Back goes Theo. He's going to run with the football, 35, and just tripped up as he gets down to the 30-yard line after a gain of six. Defensive tackle Darren, or Terrence Knighton tripped him up on that play for the Temple Owls. Well, this is only Theo's you know, second start uh, uh, this season. He's got some playing time earlier in the season, but again, you know, the more playing time and the more reps he gets, the more, the more this game starts to slow down to him. He's going to see that lane that opened up to the left side. He missed a, a wide open lane. He tried to cut it back in. He was able to get tripped up, but if he would have stayed with the lane he was running in, he might have went for six. Third down and three to go for the Bobcats. They go to the shotgun formation again. Snap back to Theo, they're coming on the blitz. He eludes one owl, rolls to the right side, and just throws it away out of bounds. Smart play by Theo. He didn't want to take the loss. And good pressure that time on the part of Temple. Defensive tackle Terrence Knighton and defensive end Ryan Sanford really put some pressure on the Bobcat quarterback. And here is Michael Bronstein with another field goal attempt. Most quarterbacks in college football have been sacked on that play, but Theo being the athlete he is, he's able to avoid the sack. This is going to be a 47-yard field goal attempt from the near hash mark. He's already missed one from 47 tonight, and a penalty flag falls, and it's, let's see what this is about. Officials are discussing what's going on. Oh, 
There's no foul on the play. For 12 players on the field, there were only 11 players. There were only 11 players. So they wave off the flag, and so Michael Bronstein will try the 47 yarder. I think what happened was Andrew Mooney was trying to get on the field, and he realized he couldn't get there in time, so he just stood off to the side, and there's just 11 guys in the football field. Snap, ball is down. Here's the kick by Bronstein. It's got the distance, and it is no good. What a rarity. Michael Bronstein has missed two field goals in this game. And right now, we've got a timeout on the field with 6.38 remaining in the first half. It's Ohio 3, Temple nothing. Very well. They're moving well. They're covering well, and they're, they're, they're attacking the football. Wideouts both ways. A single setback. That's Jason Harper. They send Bruce Francis split to the left in motion to the right, and now he lines up on the right wing. Here is a quarterback keeper, and the Bobcats are not fooled, and Charlton hit for a loss back to the 28-yard line of Temple. Middle line, a strong side backer, Michael Brown, with the defensive play. So Daryl Robinson, I beg your pardon, was in the game. Yeah, it was just a busted play for, for Temple. You know, Von Charlton was running a counter, and it was a miscommunication between quarterback and running back. They ran into each other, and it was just a busted play in Ohio. Big break for Ohio. It was able to get him in a third and 12 situation. So they go to the shotgun on third down and 12. Football is at the Temple 28-yard line. Kudup goes in motion to the right. That gives him three wide outs to the right. Rolling to the right is Charleston. Being chased, unloads a pass and throws it over the head of the intended receiver Crudup at about the 41-yard line. And that is incomplete. It'll bring up fourth down. Once again, that Bobcat defense comes through. Yes, they are. You know, last week, they didn't allow a 100-yard rusher. They're giving up uh, 200 yards a game on the ground. Last week against Bowling Green, they didn't allow a 100-yard rusher. And again tonight, Ohio defense comes out attacking, about delivering pressure from the front four and, and just covering well in the defensive secondary. So Jeff Watke back in punt formation, standing at the 14-yard line. Jeff Watney punting for the Owls. Here's a snap. Here is his kick. High end over ender. It's not going to be returned, and it sails out of bounds along the near sideline, and it's going to be marked out by the officials at the 40-yard line of the Bobcats. 32-yard punt. We've got a timeout with five minutes exactly to play in the first half. Ohio three, Temple nothing. Theo Scott has receivers both ways. Bootlegs it around to the left side. Wants to throw it. Dumps a pass over the middle. Got a man wide open. That's just Fitzgerald. Lost the football. And it's going to be ruled an incomplete pass. Fitzgerald had it, couldn't hang on, and it is incomplete. Back it comes. What a lucky break for the Ohio Bobcats because it sure looked like Justin Fitzgerald caught that football and he was spinning around to try to take off and run with it. And the ball was knocked out for a fumble, but you know, the officials felt like uh, he didn't have possession. But again, Theo Scott, you know, finding his receivers. Cheetah Wakocha was open on a, on a flag route, and then he uh, found his receiver, Justin Fitzgerald, in the middle of the field. So it is second down and 10 yards to go for the Bobcats. They go to the shotgun, two wide outs to the left, a wide out to the right. Tight end Andrew Mooney on the wing to the left, moves over on the wing to the right side. Here is Theo Scott giving it off to Calvin McCray. Big hole, 50, Calvin 45, 40, 35, and down he goes at the 30-yard line. Make it the 29-yard line of Temple. 31-yard gallop by Calvin McCray. He was finally tackled by cornerback Jamal Schulters. But, oh, what a big, big play for Calvin McCray. And what makes that play go is the fact that Temple is now thinking about the passing game. Theo Scott has proven he can throw the football. They, they're just mixing up the play, play calling beautifully. Tem offensive coordinator Tim Alvin. And then that opens up the running game for Calvin McCray. 31-yard game. So the I formation for the Bobcats. A wide out to the left, a wide out to the right. Theo Scott under center. Backfield in the eye. Hand off to Calvin again, 30, 25, breaks a tackle, 20, 15, 10, 5, he's gone, touchdown! 30-yard touchdown run by Calvin McRae with 4.20 to go in the first half, 
and it's now nine to nothing Bobcats. Confused defense, the number one defense in the MAC. Temple is confused right now. Ohio's proven they can move the football through the passing game and get different guys involved in the offense. And then you got your, your all-world player, Calvin McCray, two carries back to back over 30 yards, touchdown Bobcats, trying to put it up 10-0 uh, with uh, the extra point coming up by Michael Bronski. So a big, big play. You know, that could qualify for the sprint call of the game. You never know. Here's the extra point up, and it is good. So we've got a timeout on the field. 4.20 to go in the first half, and our score, Ohio 10, Temple nothing. Back after this on the Citizens Bank, Ohio Bobcats Sports Network. Travis Shelton and Jamal. And here is the kick. High end over ender. Running under it is going to be Travis Shelton at the 15 across the 20, 25, and caught from behind, dragging a couple Bobcats with him. A late arriving penalty flag, and uh, the stop is going to be made at the 28 yard line of Temple. Josh Abrams downfield to make the tackle. Let's see what the penalty flag is all about. Looks like it was holding on number 25, Richard Shepard, for uh, Temple. We'll find out. So here's the walk-off now against the Owls. That's going to move it back to the Temple 19-yard line. Ohio Athletics is proud that the Citizens Bank is the official bank of the Ohio Bobcats. Fans stop by the Citizens Bank on Stimson Avenue or at Walmart. Open a new free Bobcat checking account and get your Attack Cat checking card exclusively from the Citizens Bank. Bank like a Bobcat. Make the Citizens Bank your bank. Member FDIC. First down, 10 to go for Temple at their 19-yard line. Single setback, and the handoff goes to the single setback, and that is Jason Harper. Crosses the 20 and gets it out to the 22-yard line for a pickup of three. He's going to make it second down and seven. Defensive end Jamison Hartke over there to make the tackle for the Bobcat defense. Well, Jason Hartke has really come to play tonight. He's making a lot of plays for the Ohio defense. The defensive front is getting some penetration on this offensive line of Temple. Second down, seven to go for Temple. Twin receivers to the right. Backfield of the off-eye with the fullback set just to the left a little bit. Under center, quarterback, Vaughn Charlton. Takes a handoff, drops back, pressure, passes at the field, and incomplete. And there's a penalty flag up around the 48-yard line of Temple. Bruce Francis was the intended receiver, and defending on the play was Mark Parson for the Bobcats. That was an A-gap blitz by the Ohio defense. The linebacker was coming through. Uh, Lee Renfro came in uh, behind him and made the hit on the quarterback that caused that bad throw. But again, we got a penalty flag. And let's listen in. So there's a break for the Temple Owls as they move the football out to the 38-yard line of Temple. Three and a half minutes remain in the first half of this game, and it's Ohio 10 and Temple nothing. The Owls are going to send three wideouts to the right, a single wideout to the left, and they operate out of the shotgun. There's a fake handoff and a little jailbreak screen that is caught by Dion Crudup, but unfortunately it is incomplete at mid right in the middle of the playing field. It wouldn't have gotten much anyway. Temple just coming out, trying to spread the field a little bit and put the ball in some of their playmakers' hands. Was running a jet, like I said, a jailbreak screen across the middle, just a little bit high, a high release by Von Charlton, the quarterback for Temple, and causing an incomplete pass. So it brings up second down and 10 to go for the Owls. Crudup goes wide to the right, set to the left side is Bruce Francis. Single setback, under center is quarterback Von Charlton. Charlton takes a snap. Hands it off to Jason Harper over the right side. Cross of the 40. Carries Bobcats with him out to the 45-yard line of Temple. That's a gain of seven. Middle linebacker Taj Henley finally made the tackle for Ohio. This is going to bring up third down and three to go for Temple as we approach the three-minute mark of the first half and the Bobcats with a 10 to nothing lead over the Owls. Francis goes wide to the right. Set to the left side is Kuda. Charlton has him in the shotgun. need to get to the 48-yard line for the first down. 
Charlton over the middle and a nice catch at the 49 yard line of Ohio. Hauling that one in was Bruce Francis and that is a first down for Temple. This Bruce Francis, an outstanding receiver for the Owls. Yes, he is. He comes in this football game, 555 yards receiving, five touchdowns. He's the best receiver. And again, Mark Parson couldn't have played that any better. Ohio was bringing pressure. They're playing man to man on the outside. And it was just a, a great ball by uh, Von Charlton and a great catch by Bruce Francis. The Owls have a first down. They go to the shotgun, wide outs both directions. This time they snap it to Kruda up again. He's to the 50, 45, and gets down to the 40, let's see, the 45-yard line. Gain of four yards on the carry. And the stop made by free safety Todd Koenig. That's the third time I've seen Ohio get pinned uh, on the outside. They've they got to keep that outside arm free on those plays, and, and, and that's what has allowed that, that running play a couple plays ago for seven yards, and again, that play, a gain of uh, five yards is because the defensive end is getting pinned and the linebackers are getting pinned inside, and they can't get outside to make the play. It's the shotgun again, and this time they'll probably snap it back to Crude up again, a wide receiver. The quarterback, Charlton, is split wide to the left. Here is an inside handoff, and it goes to the ball carrier down to the 42-yard line. It is Daryl Robinson who got the call. Several Bobcats were in there on the stop. So it's a gain of four. This is going to bring up third down and about one. Looks like Jameson Harkey was in on the that last play. Another tackle for Jameson. So we're down to a minute 29 to play in this first half. Ohio 10 and Temple nothing. Trip receivers, three wide outs to the right, two wide outs to the left, a wide open backfield. Quarterback Vaughn Charlton from the shotgun. Snap back to him. Here comes the blitz, and here is a pass down the field. Got a man open, he makes the catch. That's Bruce Francis, and he takes it in all the way for the touchdown. Lee Renfro was covering on the play, but there's that outstanding receiver, Bruce Francis, 42-yard touchdown pass. Temple just cut Ohio in a situation where they were bringing pressure, they were bringing everybody, and it allowed Lee Renfro to be on one-on-one -on -one coverage with Bruce, Bruce Francis, and you're not gonna win that when you're a linebacker, when you're going against a six-foot, 181-pound junior, a speedster out there at receiver, the best receiver in this football team, and you play the linebacker on him, uh, Temple's going to win that one every time, so Ohio needs to make adjustments on, on key third down situations. Here's the extra point try by Jeff Watney. Snap, ball is down, kick is up, and it is good. So Temple gets on the scoreboard with a minute 22 to go in this first half. It's Ohio 10 and Temple 7. 118 return yards last week. He's been Here's the kick. It's a low driving one, and the ball is going to bounce out of bounds at about the 15-yard line. So Ohio will get good field position for the final one minute and 22 seconds of this first half. If they can continue with their game plan with a minute 22 left up 10-7, not try anything too risky on this series, but again, just stay with that game plan and mix the play calling up and continue to attack this defense of, of Temple. So because the ball went out of bounds, the Bobcats will get it at their 35-yard line with one minute and 22 seconds to go until intermission here at Peden Stadium. So we'll see what the Bobcats have up their sleeve here in the final one minute and 22 seconds. Taylor Price will be flanked wide to the right. From the 35 yard line. out to the left. Down, and the backfield is in the eye with Mitch Morcillo and with Calvin McRae. Theo Scott is changing the play at the line of scrimmage. Takes the snap. Looking to throw it. Is in trouble. Tries to run out of the pocket and down he goes back at the 31 yard line. A loss of four. It was defensive end Junior Gallette who got in there and got to the Bobcat quarterback. Yeah, that defensive front for Temple did an excellent job of staying in their lanes and not allowing Theo to, to scramble outside or break outside. He had to come up through the middle and the defensive line just caved in on him and was able to bring him down. Lost back to the 32, make it second down and 13 to go for Ohio. Wideouts both ways, backfield again in the eye. Theo Scott working under center. 
Gives on the handoff to Calvin McCray. Comes to the near side, and Temple won't let him turn the corner. They Calvin will not McCray. let him turn it. And Calvin goes out of bounds back at the 31-yard line for a loss of one. He loses and it yard. was cornerback Evan Cooper and outside linebacker Alex Joseph who combined on the stop. So Temple now is going to take a timeout to stop the clock with 35 seconds remaining in this first half. They want to get one more crack at the football. The Bobcats are going to face third down and 14 to go at their 31-yard line. Yeah, I, don't, I don't look for Ohio to do anything uh, too fancy on this third and 14. They'll probably try to hand the football off to Calvin, maybe off the left side, on, or uh, even a counter play with Calvin may work. Try to get this defense to, to flow one way and try to hit them back the other. Maybe you can pop the popping loose on, on that type of play. But again, you don't want to risk a, an interception or a mistake in this play. Only 35 seconds left. So the Bobcats continue to talk it over across the way. We have a couple of special guests coming up at halftime for you. We'll send it back also for the Taco John's Mac scoreboard, among other things, during intermission. So Ohio breaks the huddle back at their 31-yard line. They face third down and 14 to go. Twin receivers to the left, a single wide out to the right. They go to the shotgun. Theo Scott has the ball and gives the ball off to Calvin McCray. He fights his way out to the 39-yard line. That's going to be a gain of eight. It'll bring up fourth down and six. Outside linebacker Alex Joseph, we called his name a lot in this first half, was in on the stop. So 30 seconds remain in this first half, and Temple is going to call another timeout. They want to get their hands on that football one more time to see what they can do with it. So Matt Schulte will come in and kick it away for Ohio. This Temple team, I'll tell you what, the, a lot of young players, a lot of freshmen. We talked about that in the pregame. 25 freshmen that played uh, for this team this year. That's the most in the nation, most freshmen in the nation get playing time. A lot of sophomores on the team. There's only one senior on this travel roster, so this is this is going to be a dangerous team, not only tonight and this year in, in the MAC conference, but especially for the future. Uh, Al Golden has done an outstanding job in recruiting in that area in Philadelphia, and Virginia, and New Jersey, and, uh, and all those areas, and trying to uh, pick up those guys that are getting overlooked by Boston College. The guys are getting overlooked by Penn State. So Matt Schulte will stand back at the 25-yard line of the Bobcats to await the snap from center. Matt Schulte is in the 30 seconds remain in this first half. Marquise Liverpool back in single safety for Temple. Marquise Liverpool. Here's the snap to Schulte, and he'll get the kick away. Hits it over to the left side, and Temple's going to let the ball bounce inside the 25. It's going to be blown dead at the 24-yard line, and we have penalty flags on the play. In fact, three of them. 37-yard punt by Matt Schulte. Referee Stan Evans, we'll hear from him as to what's going on here. So the penalty against the Bobcats. That's a huge mistake by the Ohio Special Team Unit to get a personal foul in that situation. You know, 21 seconds left, and it was a... a 37-yard punt inside the 25, and then you get a 15-yard penalty. That gives Temple a chance to try to get down here and get some points. They're going to bring the football up now to the 41-yard line of the Owls, and they have 21 seconds to go in this first half. Temple huddling up along the near sideline. We'll see what Al Golden and his staff have cooked up. So they get a break after that personal Temple foul penalty on the Bobcats. Michael Campbell goes wide to the right. Twin receivers to the left. One of them is Bruce Francis. You have to keep your eye on him. Quarterback is Vaughn Charlton. Back he goes in the pocket. Dumps a little screen pass off. It goes to Jason Harper. 
Harper, good running room inside the 50 and down to the 47-yard line to the Bobcats. Tackle made by weak side linebacker Lee Renfro, but that is a first down for the Owls with 14 seconds left to go in this first half, and Temple right up to the line of scrimmage. Gain of 12 on that play. Charlton just slaps the ball down, spikes it. And that'll stop the clock with 10 seconds remaining in this first half. Again, coming up at halftime, we'll have a couple of special halftime guests for you, and we'll send it back to the studios for the Taco John's Max scoreboard as well. So the Temple offense now quickly checks into the game. Ten seconds, that's all that's left in this first half. The Owls quickly break out of the huddle. They send twin receivers to the left. A wide out to the right. They go to the shotgun. Snap back to Vaughn Charlton. Penalty flag falls. Charlton is in trouble. Runs out of the pocket now. Runs to the midfield to the 45 of Ohio and runs out of bounds to stop the clock at the 43-yard line of the Bobcats with one second left in the first half. But let's see what the penalty flag is about. And it's illegal procedure is the call against Temple. So a break for Ohio on that one with just one second remaining in the first half. So we'll see how Temple elects to play this, if they'll just spike it to end the half or maybe, you know, go for the home run ball. You never know. Ohio's defense just got to be ready for whatever's going to be thrown at them here and just, just play solid defense and not allow any guy to get behind you. Temple will go to the shotgun. The snap back to Charlton. Cranks it up, down, over the middle, and incomplete. They tried to get it to Michael Campbell. Incomplete, and that's going to end the first half. So the Bobcats get great field position to start things out. They start from their 49-yard line, snap back to Brad Bauer, a swing pass on the left flat, and a catch down to the 44-yard line. Eight of seven, Jamal Schulters was over there to make the stop on Taylor Price. Vince Davidson, number 26, 5'11", 190 pound freshman is coming in for Calvin McRae. He's out of Dayton, uh, New Jersey. And uh, I like the way he came out. Uh, there was a passive play and he ran up to the line of scrimmage and cut blocked the defensive end. So he's an aggressive player and we'd like to see how he performs tonight. He's gonna bring up now second down and about four to go. Two tight ends in the game. Taylor Price wide to the right. Backfield is in the eye. Brad Bauer in the game at quarterback. Hands the ball straight ahead to Mitch Marcello, and he takes it inside the 40 with authority. And uh, they're going to rule that his knee was down at the 39-yard line. That's a gain of four yards. And that is enough for a first down. He said Calvin plays out in this series. And he's getting his lower. Uh, look, looked like he got a little thigh. A thigh shot on that last series. He may have a thigh bruise, so that's not a good thing for Ohio. Now Vince Davidson's coming in at tailback. Backfield again is in the eye. A wide out each way. Here is a pitch to Vince Davidson looking for running room. Fights his way down to the 35-yard line. Oh, you like the way he fights and scraps. He's a tough runner. That's a gain of four. Second down and six to go. Defensive end, Junior Gillette, over there to finally get him down for the Temple defense. Clock running, 6.20 left to go in this third quarter. Ohio 10 and Temple 7. And Matt Miller is down as the Ohio trainers come out to take a look at him. Again, be sure and uh, join us on the post-game show. We'll hear from head football coach Frank Solich. We'll have the sprint call of the game, the Little Caesars hot and ready play of the game, and the Dials Hearing Center sounds of the game. Alvin McCray limps his way back out on the football field. You gotta love his toughness. And, uh, you know, th those are just nagging injuries. It, it sure looked like he took a shot in the thigh board and where that thigh pad just doesn't cover right below it and right above the knee. And that's just a, that's a sore, painful, uh, type uh, bruise and, and Calvin's lifting back out on the field and you know I think a 75% uh, Calvin McRae is not a bad uh, 
a bad back to have. So, uh, again, Calvin uh, with his courage and heart uh, coming back out on the field at tailback. Matt Miller walks off the field under his own power, so you like to see that. So over the football come the Bobcats. It is second down and six. They are at the 35-yard line of the Temple Owls. Wideouts both ways. Backfield is stacked in the eye. Here's the option by Bauer. Will he keep it? He pitches it to Calvin McCray. Calvin to the 30, lowers his head, and gets down to the 28-27 yard line of Temple, where that'll give the Bobcats another first down. There's something about it when, you, when you're a running back and you, you get an injury, for, you just get this adrenaline rush and you play at another level. That was the fastest I've ever seen Calvin McCray carry the football. He exploded once he caught that pitch and he ran over a couple defenders for Temple. And you know, anytime a back gets an injury, there's just a, another, you take your game to another level, you just, you, that toughness comes out and Calvin is showing how tough he is tonight. 16 carries, 103 yards for Calvin. First down, hand off to him again, far side, 25-20. Calvin just lowers his head and gets out of bounds. They're going to mark him out at around the, let's see, this 18-yard line, which is a gain of eight. Cornerback Jamal Shoulders finally got him out of bounds across the way. It'll bring up second down and two yards to go for Ohio. Just a different energy on that sideline when Calvin McCray gets the football. The, the players are jumping up and down every time he touches the football. Brad Bowers in the quarterback in this series, and, and the Ohio offense is rolling. Two tight ends, wide out to the right, backfield in the eye. Second down and a couple. Here's a handoff to Mitch Morcillo, and he fights his way inside the 15, down to about the 13-yard line, and that's another first down for the Bobcats, and this is just smash-mouth football now on the part of Ohio. Another helmet popped off for Temple, and that was Mitch Marcello you know, coming up through the middle there for a first down for Ohio and delivering the blow, and a couple guys in on the play, and one of the Temple uh, defenders, number 17, his helmet popped off. And that was Omar McDonough-Hales, the middle line, or the strong side backer. So first down and 10 to go, and a good-looking drive on the part of Ohio. Backfield in the eye, a wide out each way, Taylor Price to the left. Cheetah will coach it to the right, and a give straight ahead to Calvin McCray. Takes it down to the 11-yard line. A gain of two, and that'll make it second down and eight to go. Clock continues to run. 4.54 left to play in this third quarter, 10 to seven. The lead to Ohio over the Temple Owls. Last play to Calvin McCray was just an inside zone, giving Calvin the ball, and he reads that, uh, that the first guy touching attack when he cut it back inside for positive yards. Taylor Price goes wide to the left, set to the right side as Cheetah Wakocha backfield in the eye. Second down, hand off to Calvin, trying to sweep the left side, is in trouble, a whole bunch of owls hitting for a loss. That's, That's going to be a loss of four on the play. So this is going to be a big third down play now for the Bobcats. It's going to bring up third down, and we'll call it 11 yards to go. It was Alex Joseph, the outside backer, who was in there on the stop for Temple. Key third down situation. It certainly is. You don't want to settle for a field goal here. You want a touchdown. Here is LeVon Brazil flanking wide to the left, set to the right side, Taylor Price and Cheeto Wakocha. This time they go to the shotgun. Brad Bauer, your quarterback. Takes a snap, drops back. Here comes Temple on the blitz, and he has to eat the football for a loss. Temple, they came with the blitz, and it paid off. Shooting the gap was Andre Neblin, a defensive tackle, and a loss on the play back to the 26. It's going to bring up fourth down, and we see now Michael Bronstein coming into the game to try a field goal. We well, like to see Ohio maybe check off on a play on that when they see the blitz coming. I, I saw the, the defenders creeping up into the line of scrimmage, so Brad's got to read that, maybe check a play and try to get a quick hit to the to receiver. But again, you know, it's just so much going on on the play. A 43-yard field goal attempt from the far hash mark. The snap, the ball is down, the kick is up, it's long enough, and it is good. So a 43-yard field goal by Michael Bronstein makes the score now. Ohio 13 and Temple 7. And we'll be back. Michael Bronstein kicking left to right. Here's the kickoff. High end over end. 
It's going to be fielded by Jamal Shoulders across the 15, 20. Look out, 30. He's to the 40, 45. Shoulders to the 50, 40. And he's all the way down to about the 37-yard line of the Bobcats. But there's a penalty flag back upfield. And it's going to be a penalty against Temple. What a break for the Bobcats. Big penalty, and I got to give a lot of credit to Idris Lawrence, the 5'8 uh, cornerback, 166-pound sophomore out of Columbus, Ohio, Brookhaven High School, chased down uh, the returner for Temple to save that touchdown. And on top of that, luckily, a uh, penalty flag was thrown. Now this, this big run is coming back. So that was a break for the Bobcats as that nullified that nice return on the part of Jamal Schulters for Temple. So the football is back at the 25-yard line of the Owls where it'll be first down and 10 to go. We have 250 remaining in the third quarter, Ohio 13 and Temple 7. Under center is quarterback Vaughn Charlton. Backfield on the off-eye set a bit to the left, one wide out to the right, one to the left. And the handoff goes to Jason Harper, and Harper is stuffed. Good, tough defense by that Bobcat defensive line. The game is only out to the 26 for a gain of one, and it was strong side linebacker Chris Hall who led the charge on that play. Yeah, Louisville, Kentucky, Chris Hall was coming off of the edge there and, and read the plate, uh, read his key uh, just right, and was able to pick up the running back for a uh, short game, one-yard game. Twin receivers to the left, backfield on the off-eye, set to the right on second down and nine to go for the Temple Owls. They're down 13-7 to seven in this game. Back in the pocket goes Vaughn. Up the field with a pass. Oh, and almost picked off by Julian Posey. If he'd have got that, he would have been long gone. And oh, he wishes he had that one back again. I think everybody in this booth held their breath on that play because everybody saw Julian Posey have an opportunity to pick that football off and take it to the house for six. Julian made a great jump on it. The ball was going a little bit high. He jumped up, and he just went over his fingertips. So it is third and nine for the Owls, still at their 26-yard line. Receivers both ways. They go to the shotgun formation. Charlton, the snap. Back he goes. Up the field of the pass. And Mark Parson makes a one-on-one -on -one tackle on Dion Crudup. And as he caught it, it's a gain of only four. It'll bring up fourth down, and Temple will have to kick it off to the Bobcats. I love what Ohio's doing on third down situations for Temple. They run a ton of crossing routes on third down. I'm not sure why they do that, because that doesn't get you down to first down yardage. But continue to do that, Temple. You know, we like when you do that. We'll keep uh, everything in front of us and allow you to get the short catch, and we'll stop you for on the third down situation. Good defense by Ohio. Jeff Watney back to kick it away. Here's the snap, and here is the kick. Mark Parsons going to field it at the 40, trying to reverse his field, does. He's to the 40, far side, 45, and he's pulled down at the 47-yard line of the Bobcats. So once again, great field position on the part of the Bobcats. We're down to a minute 24 remaining in the third quarter, 13-7 Ohio over Temple. Mark Parsons finally got a chance to return one, and he showed himself a lot of cornerbacks uh, Get a bad rap for not having great hands, but Mark Parsons on the hands team and also back there catching punts, which is one of the hardest things to do, especially in football. And he's done a great job back there catching the football and finally got a chance to return. So the Bobcats start from their 48. Here's Bauer faking a handoff, dropping back, passing up the field. And is it a catch at the 40-yard line? The ball is loose, but they're going to say it was an incomplete forward pass. And that was a tough break. David Carter tried to haul it in and just couldn't get it done. That was Alex Joseph again, the number 38, the linebacker on David Carter that uh, broke up that play because David looked like he had the football, but uh, Alex was able to knock down the, the football right at the last second. No gain on the play, second down and 10 to go for the Bobcats. Not sure how many tackles Alex Joseph has, but we called him na his name a ton oh, tonight. We for, have uh, done Temple's just defense. that. You're right. Twin receivers to the right, single setback. Brad Bauer, the quarterback, takes a snap. Rolls to the right side, sets up a screen. It's complete, 50, 45, 40 to Vince Davidson, 30, 25. Still on his feet inside the 25, and he's down at about the 23-yard line. 
of the Temple Owl stop made by free safety George Coleman. I love the play call. They run a play action to Vince Davidson and have Brad Bauer roll out that allows the defensive line come to Brad, and he was able to dump the ball off to Vince Davidson. He picked up 30 yards on that screen play. First down and 10 to go for the Cats at the 22-yard line of the Owls. Wide outs both ways, backfield in the eye. Here's the pitch to Davidson, running strong to the 20. He's to the 15, 10, 5, and dives towards the end zone. He gets in, touchdown! Gotta love the way Vince Davidson runs, folks. He's only a freshman. He's a senior, and you're getting a look at the future running back for, for Ohio, number 26, took that football in for a touchdown, running hard, his first touchdown of his career. 22-yard run by Vince Davidson, and that ups the Bobcat lead to 19-7 to over Temple with 43 seconds remaining in this third quarter. Here's a snap. Extra point try by Michael Bronstein is good. So with 43 seconds remaining in this third quarter, it's now the Bobcats 20 and Temple 7. And here's the kick by Michael. High end over end. Will be fueled by one of the up backs at the 20, 25, 30. Across the 40, 45 and with that is Dion Crudup, one of the upbacks who caught that and made a nice return out to about midfield. We'll see where they uh, we'll see where they spot that. It's a return of 26 yards, and that puts Temple now with great field position at their 49-yard line, first and 10 with 36 seconds left to go in the third quarter. And Michael Bronstein made that tackle. You never like to hear that your kicker made the, uh, the tackle on a kickoff coverage play, and Michael got up. Uh, that was a big boy he had to bring down, and he got up a little shaken up, it looked like. So the Temple offense now quickly out on the field. They're down 20-7, to 7, 36 seconds to go in this third quarter. Bobcats coming up, showing blitz. Here's a fake. Charlton to throw it. Down the field and incomplete. And, and all kinds of flags. Pass interference going to be called on uh, Todd Caney. Yep. They tried to pass the ball downfield. Caney, though, uh, Pass interference is going to be the call against him. Uh, I, knew, I, I knew Todd Koenig's trying to plead his uh, case right now, but just watching that up in the replay booth, even though he had great coverage, he made a nice play. The problem was he had his backside hand on the back of the receiver, and, and that's going to get called every single time. The intended target was Delano Green. So now here's Temple with a big break. First and 10 at the Bobcat, 36-yard line. Here's Francis, starts in motion to the left, goes back to the right. Here is a handoff, and it goes to Jason Harper, and nothing doing. It was, it was Landon Cohen, also Noah Keller, who combined on that play. And nothing doing, no gain on the play, make it second and 10. This running game for Temple is just really non-existent tonight. You love to hear that if you're a Bobcat fan and, and looking at this defense, it's just been getting criticized all year of not being able to stop the run, giving up over 200 yards every game, making every running back that comes that they play look like an All-American. And I tell you what, last week and this week, Ohio defense has stepped up big in stopping the run. That's the end of the third quarter here at Peden Stadium. So the Owls are set to go with the line of scrimmage. They have wideouts both ways. Split to the right side is their outstanding wideout, Bruce Francis. They go to the shotgun formation. Charlton takes the snap, the quarterback. Moves up in the pocket now, has time, will run. He's to the 35, lowers his head, and breaks a tackle and gets down to the 31-yard line. That's a gain of five. Michael Mitchell and Todd Koenig both combined to finally get him out of bounds along the near sidelines. Gain of four, so it's going to bring up now third down and six to go for Temple. Another big, important play coming up for this Bobcat defense. 
going to be interesting to see what Jimmy Burrow is going to call the defensive coordinator for Ohio. He's called a couple blitzes on third down and third and short situations. Ohio's got burnt on them. And when he played more conservatively in his zone, man, uh, man under co coverage, they've been successful. So from the shotgun, they go with three wide outs to the left. Charlton takes the snap. Bob Catcher coming on the blitz, and down he goes. Loose football. Rolling up the field, and it's going to be fallen on by Well Temple. Then they lose it again, and the Bob Catcher there. Let's see who gets it. Ohio says they've got it, and it is there. Ohio is able to get uh, a lot of pressure on quarterback uh, Vaughn Charlton, and he, they actually caught Ohio in a, in a situation where Michael Mitchell was one on one again with Francis on the outside, and that's where the quarterback is looking to throw the football. And Ohio is able to get the pressure, cause the fumble, recover the football. Ohio's ball. Lee Renfrew got that football for the Bobcats, and so a big break for Ohio. They get it at midfield. First down and 10 to go with 14:39 left in this game. We have called Lee Renfrew's name. Oh probably 12 times tonight. He's doing an excellent job for the Ohio defense in his linebacker spot. Wide outs both ways, two tight ends in the game. Single setback. And that setback is Calvin McCray gets the ball, fights inside the 45 and takes it down to the 43 yard line for a gain of seven. Outside linebacker Amara Kamara came in to make the tackle for the Temple defense. Turnovers play such a huge role in football games and, and the shift of momentum. There's a lot of excitement on the sideline for, uh, for the Ohio Bobcats, and the offense comes out the first play. Calvin McCray on a counter, runs upfield for a seven-yard gain, lowering his shoulder. Boy, the Ohio offense looks really good. Calvin has 120 yards on the ground tonight, and he's not done. You can bet on that. Here is an inside handoff to Mitch Morsillo, the big fullback, and he just crawls straight ahead and drags Owls with him down to the 41-yard line, a gain of two. It's going to bring up third down and about a yard and a half to go now for the Bobcats. That clock continues to run. 13.42 left to go in this football game. Ohio 20 and Temple 7. Ohio gets in, in short yardage situations. They like to run that tra trap play with Mitch Marcello. He's a big fullback. He's, he's carried the ball quite a few times for first downs this year. Wide out to the right. Two tight ends in the game. Backfield in the eye. Brad Bauer, your quarterback, turns, hands it off to Calvin McCray, picks his way, and dives down to the 40. Is going to be close to the first down. Free safety. Jaquan Jarrett came up to make the tackle for the Owl defense. Don't think it's going to be enough, so here's decision time for Frank Solich. It's going to be fourth down and less than a yard to go for the Cats. Well, it looks like they're going to go for it. I, I don't know. I might punt them and try to pin them deep in, in their own territory, up 20-7 to seven in a situation like this. You know, you're out of range for field, out of field goal range. You're right on the 40. you got a, a yard for the first down, so we'll, well, Ohio's going for it. They're going for it. Wide outs both ways. Quarterback sneak by Brad Bauer, and... A big pile up at about the 40. I don't know. I don't know if he got it. I don't think so. Temple says they've stopped him. So the Temple defense, they stop Ohio on fourth down and less than a yard, and they take over at their own 41 yard line. Yeah, see, you know, I, that's why. I was thinking you should put in that situation up to 20 to seven. You have a yard to get. You could really pin back Temple. And uh, you know, Ohio went for it. They went for the gamble and just unfortunately didn't come up with the first down. So Temple now, we'll see how they respond to that. They're down 20 to seven with 1237 left to go in this game. They have the football at their 41. Two wide outs to the left, a single wide out to the right. That's Bruce Francis, a lone setback. Vaughn Charlton turns, hands the ball off, and uh, about a yard gain on the ball carrier. That is Jason Harper. He's jammed up by middle linebacker Noah Keller of that Bobcat defense. There has been a change in this defensive mentality and stopping the run. The thing that I'm noticing is, you know, all year we've been talking about the linebackers trying to get off blocks and filling holes a little bit better. Well, I'll tell you what, folks, tonight they are doing just that. Noah Keller, Lee Renfro, you know, all those guys, Michael Brown, all of them are filling the holes and filling the gaps and getting off their blocks and making plays. And
and that's why they're stopping the run. Twin receivers to the left, second down and eight for Temple at their 43-yard line. Back goes Vaughn. Charlton airs it deep down the field, going deep, got a man. Bruce Francis couldn't get it, incomplete down around the 10-yard line, and it was Julian Posey there, step for step with him. Yeah, Charlie Francis. Yeah, Bruce Francis almost came up with that football, and, and, and Julian Posey was right with him step for step. But as soon as uh, Francis looked up for the football, Julian looked back, and he, he lost a step. And luckily, that ball was uh, thrown out of bounds. Uh, so, uh, it might have been a catch by Bruce Francis. But again, Julian Posey right there on the coverage, doing exactly what he's asked to do, riding the hip of that receiver. So it brings up now third down and seven to go. Temple at their 43-yard line. They go to the shotgun with three wide outs to the left side. Let's see what Vaughn Charlton does here. The snap back to him. Bobcatcher coming on the blitz, and he's in trouble, and they got him, and down he goes back at the 41-yard line. That just might be good enough for the Dials Hearing Center sound of the game. That's a, that's a huge third down play. And again, the defensive line for Ohio really got great penetration. Another blitz by two good linebackers. Looked like Noah Keller was coming in on that play as well. Was able to crowd the, the quarterback, Von Charlton, and bring him down for a sack. Big change of turn of events for Ohio. It was Michael Brown and guess who? Lee Renfro who Lee got Renfro. him down. Wow. I'll tell you what. So Lee Renfro's got unofficially seven tackles tonight and just continues to make play after play. Here's the punt by Temple. It hits at the 31, inside the 25, rolling inside the 20, and it'll be blown dead at the 14-yard line of the Bobcats. So Ohio takes over there. That's a 44-yard punt by Matt Schulte. And so it'll be first down and 10 to go for the Temple Owls. Looking at the, some of the quarterback statistics for Ohio, uh, Theo Scott, 7 of 12, 94 yards out uh, with a groin injury tonight. Uh, Brad Bowers coming back out on the field for this series. He's 3 of 5 for 43 yards at, along with 30. Both quarterbacks been sacked once. And again, at Calvin Round McRae, 14, over 120 line, yards tonight uh, for the Ohio offense. So Brad Bowers sets him down. Ohio starts on their 14-yard line. Calvin McRae is the lone setback. They hand the ball off to him, lowers his head, crosses the 15, and gets out to the 20-yard line. Gain of six on the carry. Outside linebacker Amara Kamara came over to make the tackle for the Temple defense. This is the point of the game where Ohio offensively becomes very dangerous. They're up 20 to seven. You got uh, an all-Mac, really an all-American, all, an all -American, I, I think, candidate running back in Calvin McRae that gets stronger as the game goes on. You know, he had 42 carries last week against Bowling Green. This is where you feed Calvin the ball, continue to milk that clock and get first downs. Second down and four to go for the Cats. Wide outs both ways. Again, the I formation, the pitch to Calvin, a sweep to the left side. He's across the 20, breaks a tackle across the 25, and takes it out to the 27-yard line. And that is enough for a first down for the Cats. Evan Cooper, a cornerback, came over to make the tackle for the Temple Owls. Got him slow to get off again, but uh, he just cut the, the toss play, that short toss play again to the left side and the short side of the field, and Calvin was able to get outside. The Ohio offensive line did a good job of getting on some linebackers and getting everything pinned inside, allow Calvin to get one-on-one -on -one with that corner, and he was able to get a first down. 23 carries, 134 yards for Calvin McCray tonight. Only 23 carries? That's a light night for uh, Calvin McCray. Wide out to the right for the Cats. Here's a handoff to Calvin again over the left side. 30, 35, 40, and out to the 43-yard line. Another first down, and there is Calvin McRae, and he is not going to be stopped. This, this is where he becomes unstoppable. And late in the football game, just like we were talking about, it's a young defense. It's the number one defense in the Mid-American Conference in Temple, and Ohio is up 27. Things are starting to open up. Calvin McRae just continues to lower his shoulder and hit the seams and run hard, and that just really, really puts it to the defense. And the defense is getting tired out there, and that's exactly what Ohio wants, continue to run that football, get first downs, milk that clock. So from the 43-yard line, first down and 10 to go for the Cats. Fake to Calvin, rolling to the right side as Brad Bauer runs it. He's to the 40, 45, and just slides to the 46-yard line. 
Got about three yards on that play. Outside linebacker Alex Joseph over there to bring him down for Temple. Between Alex Joseph and Lee Renfro, wow. Yeah, yeah both of them have huge nights. Alex Joseph, uh, he has 13 tackles tonight, uh, 1.5 tackles for loss, and he's just been all over the field in, in pass coverages and done a great job from his linebacker spot. He's only a sophomore. Another one of those sophomores for Temple, and like you said, Lee Renfro is coming up big on the Ohio's defensive side. But right now, the Ohio offense is rolling. They're on second and seven. The football is at their 46-yard line. They go to the shotgun. The snap back to Brad Bauer, wants to throw it. Sets up a pass over the middle to Andrew Mooney. He makes the catch, and Mooney takes it out to the 48-yard line the in Bobcat in territory. Gain of four where outside linebacker Amara Kamara over to make the tackle for the Owls. Clock continues to run. We're down to 8.22 to go in this game. 20-7, to Ohio with the lead over Temple. Give a lot of credit to the defense of uh, Temple in that play. Ohio's running the screen pass. They faked the screen to Calvin McCray and then came back across the middle to the tight end, and the Temple was all over that. That was a nice defensive play for Temple. They go to the shotgun. The Cats do. Two wideouts left. A single wideout to the right. Brad Bauer takes the snap, drops back. Temple's coming, rifles a pass right side, and a good catch at the 40. And then getting away is LeVon Brazil down inside the 35. And Brazil is down to about the 30-yard line. And Justin Fitzgerald, I beg your pardon, made that catch. And that is a big gain and another first down for the Bobcats. 23 yards on the pass play. And Brad Bauer did an excellent job of staying in the pocket to wait for his receiver to get open and delivering the football. And again, what made that play go? I, you know, I harp on this a lot, it seems like, about Calvin McCray. We talk about him and, and from his running ability, but he came up with another key block to allow Brad Bauer to have the time to deliver the football. First down and 10 to go for the Cats. They're at the 30-yard line of Temple. Snap back to Bauer in the shotgun. Has all day, rifles a pass, a catch by Andrew Mooney inside the 20, and he takes it down to the 17-yard line. That is another first down for Ohio. Jamal Schulters over there to make the tackle, but not before a 14-yard gain. This Ohio offensive line has really taken control of this football game. Not only they shown they are running the football late in the game, but they're also doing a great job in pass protection. Again, the offensive line, great pass protection. Cal McCray came off the edge, made another nice block, and, uh, and allowed Brad Bauer just to stand in the pocket and just have plenty of time to deliver the football. Ohio's offense is clicking on all cylinders. You are certainly right. First down and 10 to go for the Bobcats. Wideouts both ways. Backfield is in the eye. Temple showing blitz. The handoff to Calvin McCray spins his way down to the 15-yard line. Calvin gets a couple on the play, but more importantly, the clock just continues to tick away. Second down and eight to go for Ohio at the 15-yard line of Temple. We approach the seven-minute mark, and it's 20-7. to Ohio with the lead over the Temple Owls. What a drive on this series by the Ohio offense. is just taking a lot of clock away, and they just look very good in all phases and, and trying to put another... Six on the board to try to put this football game away. Justin Fitzgerald wide to the right, set to the left is LeVon Brazil. The I formation, the pitch to Calvin McCray, looking for running room, cuts it back up the middle and gets it down to the 13 yard line. Cuts back just inside the 15 That's a gain yard of line. one yard on now the play. In fact, they spot it at the 14. Pursuing for the so this is going to bring up third down and eight, eight to go for the Cats. The price is coming in the football game. He's caught a touchdown in, in his last well, three foot, the last three games line. for Ohio. It'll remain third and eight. A 26 yard touchdown pass against Bowling Green last week. Here come the Cats. Brazil and Wakocha wide to the right. Set to the left side is Taylor Price. Man in motion, Wakocha. 
Here's Brad Bauer back to throw it. Passes over the middle and a catch by Andrew Mooney inside the five down to the four yard line. It'll be first down and goal to go Cats. I love the call. Cheeto will coach. It was coming in motion. It brought a lot of attention to him because he was coming across the line fast and then he reversed back out and that allowed all the attention to be put on those receivers. Andrew Mooney's able to slip up in the middle, hook up over the middle, catch the football, get upfield, first down, Bobcats. First down and goal to go. Out they come. Two tight ends in the game. Taylor Price wide to the left. Backfield in the eye. Jason White is now in the game at fullback. Calvin McCray at tailback. And here is the handoff to Jason White. Hits over the right side and gets down to about the two. It'll be second down and goal to go. And that clock just continues to run. Second down and goal to go for the Bobcats. Five minutes left. Ohio 20, Temple 7, and Ohio knocking at the door again. Blake Calvin was slow to get up on that last play. And Bobcats are ready to go. Mitch Marcillo now back in the game at fullback. Power formation. The handoff to Calvin McCray. Hits straight ahead and gets down to the one-yard line. It's going to be third down and goal to go for the Bobcats. You can see why this defense was rated and is number one in, in, in the Mid-American Conference. It's, it's Calvin ran up in there hard, and it's almost like he hit a, a, a brick wall. Was not, I've never seen Calvin knock back in a football game, and tonight he's been knocked back a couple times. This is a talented, physical, young football team. Football is resting at the two, third down and goal to go for Ohio. I formation. Everybody in tight. Brad Bauer turns, hands the ball up to Calvin McCray, hits down near the goal line, and he's pushed back. Third down run by Calvin. He didn't get in. It's going to bring up fourth down. And here's Michael Bronstein in to try a field goal attempt. So Temple played tough defense down on the goal line. They really did. Yeah, but Ohio was a little conservative. Yep. They were yep. just giving the football to Calvin right up the middle. And, and uh, you know, that defense was just able to stand in there and just, almost like a stone wall and just stop everything. And again, Michael Bronstein's getting another opportunity on the field goal tonight. To, to put Ohio up 23-7. Ball will be set down at the nine. It'll be a 19-yard field goal attempt. Snap, ball is down, kick is up, and it is, it's good. So we've got a timeout, 2.59 left in the game. It's Ohio 23, Temple 7, back after this. So here is the kick by Michael Bronstein. Drills it off to the right, gets at the 10, and it goes out of bounds at the two-yard line. So the Owls will get good field position with 2.59 to go, but they're down 23 to 7 to the Cats. Well, next up for Ohio, it's a quick turnaround next Wednesday night. They'll be at the Rubber Bowl to take on the Akron Zips. It'll be a 7.30 kickoff. We'll be on the air with our pregame show at 7 o'clock from the Rubber Bowl. So it'll be the Temple Owls. Well, and what Temple's going to do is uh, they're going to move Ohio back five yards and make them kick it again. That last drive was 14 plays on the drive and 84 yards. It's a nice drive. That's what you, you like to see at the, at the end of the football game. And, that's what we were talking about. Ohio's Calvin McCray, a heavy dose of that, and just did a great job. Here's the kick by Bronstein. Fielded at the 12-yard line. Across the 20, 25, 30, 35, and, and a loose football, and the Bobcats say they've got it. They're pointing that they've got it. There's a lot of jostling. No, they say Temple has it. They say Temple has it. There's still a bunch of pile players down on the field. Was... 
24-yard kickoff return for Shelton. So Temple gets the football with two minutes and 50 seconds to go. 23-7, Ohio with the lead over the Owls. What a hit by Stafford Gatley. I mean, the linebacker, he's 6'4", 224 pound freshman that laid a huge hit on the returner for Temple. Here's Charlton back in the pocket, a pass over the middle and a catch across the 40 and a penalty flag as the gain is out to the 43. Dion Crudup has a face mask on the part of the Bobcats. Temple, they're lined up ready to go at the line of scrimmage. The officials are going to talk this one over. So the officials continue to visit. Ooh, that one hurts with yes, two minutes and 43 seconds left. And the walk-off is going to put Temple now in Bobcat territory at the Ohio 43-yard line. So let's see what the Owls can do here from the shotgun. The snap back to Von Charlton. Here's pressure, and down he goes! He spun down and getting in there. On him was Connor Riley to make the big hit. Connor Riley and also the true freshman, Curtis Myers, number 99, coming off his defensive end spot, as well as Connor Riley coming in, just smashing the quarterback. So the Owls go with out of huddle. The loss back to their 49. Here's a pass near sideline and a catch by Crudup. And he is out of bounds, back in Bobcat territory at the Ohio 47-yard line. 47-yard line, a four-yard connection. Landon Cohn come back into this football game for the defensive line of the Ohio Bobcats. Again, Bobcat fans, this defense has really stepped up tonight and played an excellent football game. It's going to hang on for the last two minutes and 13 seconds. Third down and 14. So this brings up third down. We'll call it 14 to go at the 47-yard line of Ohio from the shotgun. Juan Charlton back in the pocket, pass protection, moves up, and now a extra run. He's to the 40-yard line and shoves, uh, tries to stiff arm a Bobcat player. He goes out at the 41-yard line along the near sideline. He's going to be way short of the first down yardage. And uh, strong side linebacker Michael Brown got him out of bounds. Michael Brown out of Cincinnati, Ohio, went to Elder High School. Great football area down there in Cincinnati, high school football. A lot of good football players come out of Cincinnati. Fourth down and nine, and Temple down 23 to seven. With 2.05 left in the game, we'll go for it. Back in the pocket goes Charlton. A pass down the field and a nice catch down to the 15-yard line is the tight end, Kevin Armstrong, for a big first down for the Owls. 24 yards on the pass play, and Temple still in business. Michael Brown put a huge hit on uh, the quarterback, uh, Vaughn Charlton, on that play, and he did a good job of staying in the pocket and delivering the football and threw the ball right over top Michael Brown. Football is marked at the 18-yard line of the Bobcats. Charlton to throw it, passes, and tipped, and is it intercepted? It is, it's picked off. Thad Turner intercepts the pass, and that stops the Temple threat. Michael Brown put on the big hit to cause that ball to tip up in the air, and Thad Turner was able to come up with the pick. So we've got a timeout on the field with 1.51 left to go in the game. Our score, Ohio 23, Temple 7, back after this on the Citizens Bank Ohio Bobcats Sports Network. We got, we got two, zero. That's why, that's on a fifth. <laughs> that's, that's what I can remember. Yeah, it, as far as the halftime stats, we didn't turn the ball over the second half, so. Yeah, that's it. We got two and they have none. Or they got, <laughs> yeah. yeah. They have two. And yeah. I'll just take care of the rest of the game. Right. Oh, 
seem like a championship to me. Yep. You know, the yep. last couple yep. years. Back at Peyton Stadium, Thad Turner has just intercepted a Temple pass. It gives the Bobcats the football, first down and 10 to go at their 11, with just a minute 51 left to go in the game. Brad Bauer sets him down. I formation in the backfield. Brad turns, gives the ball off to Vince Davidson, and he carries out to the 15-yard line for a gain of four. The Bobcats in no hurry right now. They just want that clock to continue to tick down. Four-yard gain to the 15-yard so Second down and six to go for Ohio. You know, Bobcat fans, Ohio has really looked like a championship team these last couple of weeks. You know, against Bowling Green last week to go in that environment and get the win that they got. They really dominated a lot, most of that game. And then coming in tonight against a very tough uh, Temple defense, number one defense in the conference, and to play the way they have is just, uh, it's just really encouraging here down at the stretch at the end of the season. Here's a blitz by the Owls. Here's a pitch to Vince Davidson. Picks his way over the right side and gets maybe a yard to the 16, but that's about it. The clock is approaching the one-minute mark of this game, and Ohio and uh, Temple will call a timeout to stop the clock. Again, we want to remind folks that next Tuesday there will not be a Frank Solich Tuesday night call-in show from Courtside Pizza. Because of the Akron game on also Wednesday, tomorrow, the following Tuesday, we'll pick it up on the 13th with Green the next Frank Solich Tuesday night calling show. And it was really neat that uh, last tomorrow, Tuesday night, Calvin McCray came down. And it was really fun. The folks really enjoyed listening to him. That was, that was fun. He's a great young man. You know, I've got the opportunity to know Calvin pretty well over the last few years and just uh, being there for him and, and giving him words of encouragement to continue to strive for excellence in all areas of his life. And I just really appreciate what he has done uh, for this university and the commitment, the discipline, the dedication, the heart and passion he has shown and given to this football program and this university. He's a fine young man. He's going to be a great miss by uh, Bob Williams. Turnaround playing uh, Wednesday night against uh, right. the Akron Zips. Get a score update on that. On that. Uh, looks like uh, Bowling Green's up 31 6 on Akron. Nine minutes left in the third quarter. So it is third down and six now for the Bobcats. Brad Bauer hands it off to Vince Davidson, sweeps the right side, gets it across the 20, and gets the first down. As he crosses the 30, let's see where they mark him out. I think it's going to be back at the 29-yard line. We'll wait and see. I think it is the 29, but that is a first down, and that should pretty much take care of business here for the Bobcats, a gain of 15 by Vince Davidson. Ohio will even their record at 5-5 five and five on the season, and they'll even their Eastern Division record at 2-2. Two and two. And tomorrow I'm going to be a Miami of Ohio fan for the first time in my life to beat Buffalo. Yes, you're right. Because <laughs> you won't hear me say that too often, trust me. Uh, there, there's Red Hawks down there in Oxford. So the football is at the 30. First and 10, 56 seconds left to go. Here's the handoff to Vince Davidson, cuts it back up the middle and gets a couple out to the 32. I know, Warren, you've only Two been this your first year at Ohio University, so you... You haven't got a chance to really taste a little bit of this rivalry between Ohio, Ohio and Miami of Ohio, the Red Hawks. And um, it's tough being a Bobcat to say you're actually going to root for Miami of Ohio <laughs> on a Saturday <laughs> afternoon. But the Buffaloes just having a great season with Turner Gill, you know, 3-0 oh, in you the Mac East. Yep. And uh, yeah, they need we, Ohio needs Buffalo to get a loss. And Brad Bauer will take a knee, and time is going to run out. Temple's out of timeouts, and the Bobcats now have won two in a row. They've evened their record at 5-5, five and five, and they've evened their Eastern Division record of the match at 2-2. Two and two. A good, good, solid win for Ohio tonight. They win it 23-7 over the Temple Owls.